Good morning and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. For an upcoming project that I've got in mind, I need a couple of swedges that I don't have. I've got swedges that are too big. I've got swedges that are about the right width, but they're a little bit too deep because I need an oval impression, not a half round impression. So I think instead of trying to make do, let's make a couple of swedges. Now to make these swedges, I've got this piece of industrial jackhammer bit that somebody sent me. I don't know exactly what it came off of. We did a video about this trying to test it and see what the material might be. And if I can figure out where that video is, I'll link to it right up here. I need to go back and watch it and see what I decided this material was and how best to heat treat it if I bother heat treating those. And we'll talk more about that when we actually make the switches. Now, I'm certainly not going to try and wrestle that big piece of material in the forge, so I've cut off a few pieces of it. And I could do all of this by hand. We've looked at making swedges by hand, but starting with this big a piece of material, that isn't the most efficient way to do it. I'm going to let myself use the hydraulic press and the power hammer to do this. Most of it will be done under those two tools. Some of it will be done at the anvil to make sure it really fits my hardy hole. The biggest problem to doing things like this under a power hammer or a press is at some point, you have to upset the shoulder at the bottom of the swedge so that it sits flat on your anvil. And to do that, you need some sort of a big bolster that will go under the power hammer so you can drop the hardy shank in there and set that shoulder down. So to do that, and this has to be our first task, I need to make that tool. I'm going to use this giant piece of tubing. Yes, this is actually tubing. You can buy it like this. It's 4140. It's it's three and a half inches in diameter, so that's about 90 millimeter diameter tubing with an inch and a half hole in the middle. So again, that's about a 40 millimeter hole. This stuff isn't cheap, but I only bought one foot of it quite some time ago. With this project in mind, I have just haven't gotten around to it. And I've cut some slices off of this and made other bolsters for other purposes under the power hammer. It's quick, it's efficient, not the most cost effective, but it's so much easier than trying to put a hole through something that's four inches tall. This is a big, tall piece of material, and it needs to be to make sure that when you set your hardy shank in here, that you're not upsetting the bottom of it against the bottom die of the power hammer or the hydraulic press, because if you do that, you're never getting it out of the tool again. So the first thing we need to do is make the tool. And that may be all we get done today. I'm not sure how much work this is going to be. I am sure the hole in this, when I work this into a square, is not going to end up perfectly square and probably not going to end up exactly the inch and a quarter size I need for my hardy hole on my anvil. That means I'm going to have to drift it. I've got a drift that's the right size, but it's a little bit short. If I can manage to drive that all the way through and work from both sides, this will work. If not, I also have to make a drift. Sometimes you've got to make tools to make tools to make the other tools you want. But the other problem that I have with this, unfortunately, is that the entrance to my forge isn't quite three and a half inches tall. I can start to get this in. I can't quite get it in. So I'm going to have to grind a flat on both sides of this so I can just barely fit it through the door. Once we start to forge this into a square shape, it won't be a problem. At that point, it'll fit through the door just fine. But to get that first heat on it before we can go to the power hammer the very first time, I'm just going to have to make this a little bit smaller on two sides. Not a big deal. It's not going to hurt anything in the long run. Just a little bit extra work. So if that all makes sense to you, let's meet over at the power hammer and we'll get to work.
Well, that was a bit of work, but now we need to let that cool. And I know somebody's going to ask, this hammer is three kilos. This hammer is 14 pounds. You'll just have to look up the conversion table. Now the three kilo hammer is my preferred striking hammer because it's lighter. You can be a lot more precise with it, but it doesn't really have the power of this one that's twice the weight. On the other hand, I only bought this one sort of as a joke because people come into the shop on a demo or something like that and say, oh, don't you have a bigger striking hammer? So I let them try this one for one or two blows. Then they're happy to use the lighter hammer. But anyways, even sitting out in air, that's probably going to take a few hours to cool off. So, so I'll go do a few other things around the shop, take a lunch break, then I'll come back to it. Well, this thing is cooled off enough that I can hold on to it, but it's still plenty warm and it's three hours later. But you can see that we've got a nice square hole in there, and it's a little bit bigger than the inch and a quarter hole on my anvil, which means that any tools I make in this will need just a little bit more work to make them fit properly. And to me, that's ideal. That way I don't have to hope that they fit right off of this. I can actually custom fit them to the hardy hole in the last steps. Just looking at a fairly standard swedge, I got plenty of height here, so I don't have to worry about upsetting the the hardy shank on the bottom die of the power hammer or the hydraulic press. And width-wise, I've got just enough width to get a fairly standard size swedge. So the next thing I want to do is I just want to go clean this up. It's a little bit upset on the ends from doing all the drifting. I want to grind that off so it's clean and has a little radius there. And I want to put a little radius on the inside of the hole so it doesn't leave a sharp nick that'll turn into a, that might turn into a stress riser right here at this transition on a swedge. But I think I'm going to do that off camera. It's just me standing in front of a grinder for the next half hour or so. So once again, I will meet you right back here when I'm done with that. And like I say, the final step is to clean up the inside of this. And this little Dynafile is the ideal tool for it. If you if you don't have one of these, you can certainly use hand files, maybe even a die grinder with the right size bit. But you do want to get right into these corners to make sure there's not a sharp corner here because you don't want this tool to crack either. So the next thing I want to do is weld a handle onto this. And I've got a handle ready. It's cooling right now. And I'll put that handle at a 45 degree angle to the center hole so that it is convenient to go either under the hydraulic press or the power hammer just depends on what I'm working on. I'm hoping this works in either location. So pretty much that's it for our giant bolster that we will use for making some hardy tools. Pretty much you just rough out the hardy shank, make sure it'll fit in the hole, drive it down in there with either the press or the power hammer, and that creates a nice shoulder. Then you can leave it in here while you create the depression, unless you're making fullers or cutoff hardies or something like that, in which case you'd do a different procedure. But my first job with this tool is to make some swedges. Now, unfortunately, I think we're kind of running out of time for today. The next step that I need to do here is square up this round bar that I've already cut, make it ready to make swedges out of. Then we'll look at actually forging the swedges and getting those all finished and completed. Now this is made out of 4140 and it's pretty tough even if it's not hardened and tempered. So I'm gonna see how this tool performs as is. If it starts to mushroom in and the hole starts to deform at all, then I'll redrift it, clean it up, anneal it, normalize it, go ahead and harden it. But this is gonna take a lot of oil to properly quench my bucket doesn't have that much in it, so I'd probably have to order a fresh bucket of oil. And I might go ahead and do that anyways, because it's something I've been meaning to do. But for now, we're going to try it unhardened. I think it'll probably be okay. With any luck, it'll last me 20 or 30 years. As I said, this was a piece of 4140 tubing that I bought, and I bought a foot of it. I've already made two bolsters. This one is just simply cut off of the bar. There's nothing else done to it other than grind the edges so it doesn't have any sharp edges on it but it's not hardened and tempered. This one is not hardened and tempered, and it was just a round like this that was squished down on the side to make an oval, and that's really all I've ever done to it. That leaves me with another four inches of this same material. I could make another block like this in one inch size to fit my other anvil, 
but I'm not sure that I really need to do that at this point. But maybe that's the best thing to do with it because it's already the right length. The other option would be to turn it into two more bolsters like this and maybe make one of them into a square that's a similar size as this, but shorter. And having a bolster like that would have allowed me to use my drift under the hydraulic press when I was drifting because I needed a hole under it. If it's on a flat die, it's just going to impact the bottom die and it's not going to go anywhere. But if I make a square bolster, then I could push that through at least that far and get a lot closer to being finished and not have to swing that 14 pound sledgehammer so much. Now, before I leave you, in the last video, I said I was going to try and change when I post videos a little bit. Overwhelmingly, people said they would prefer a Wednesday video. Now, this one's going to post on Friday, so we'll still have the hook of the week on Sunday. And I will try to post a regular video next Wednesday, which will probably be the making of these swedges. And then we'll get on to the project that I have in mind to use these swedges for hopefully the next Wednesday. If things are going really well, maybe I'll still keep a Friday video in there and do three next week. We'll just see how it goes. I do have some other ideas for short, simple videos that aren't just me talking to the camera like I'm doing now, but some interesting things about tools. Maybe we'll talk more about the little mini belt grinders as a tool of the day sort of video, even though that series is long over with, but we could do a little bit of a reprisal on it on a few things we haven't talked about. I also have a finishing technique I've never tried before that I want to present in an upcoming video. So that may just be a little fill-in video. Put it out there whatever day I feel like doing it, but it won't replace the forging video on Wednesday or the hook of the week video on Sunday. I hope that all makes sense. Made sense in my head when I said it. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.